Greetings YouTube. We have here an S8 or C3 Kona, uh, but pretty much what I'm going to show you is the same on any of the C3 models, whether it be a Kona, a cat and dog, um, really any of them. So I have in here just an explosion of stuff. And what happened was that the, for some reason, some people have trouble putting their bag in. Uh, and this poor lady, she's also not old or elderly, she was in, in her late 20s, I'd say. Um, had trouble putting her bag in. Instead of just, you know, popping the bag in, she did this. She tucked it down, and as you can imagine, when that happens, you can see, boom. Well, you can't see, because camera just doesn't sense it, but you can see where it's just going to move around that bag in there. Um, so yep, we are going to uh, have to take this apart and clean it out. So that bag is trash. <laughs> um, but she's got a brand new HEPA filter. <laughs> um, it's such a mess in here. Um, so I'm actually just going to pull the bag dock out. I see that it's slightly bowed a little bit. I might just replace her bag dock. Be on the safe side. So first thing I'm gonna do is with the Mila. Mila. One must ask, if you vacuum a Mila with a Mila, is it cannibalism? All right, this lid just pops right off. Again, don't try this at home. You can see that nastiness there. Wash that. All right. Um, and there is a special Mila tool for doing this. And I highly recommend you bring this to your Mila dealer and don't try this at home. If you are a Mila dealer watching this, um, you have other problems with your staffing. <laughs> um, all right, you have to be careful taking these off. These things break real easily. Um, so yeah, the bumper just pulled apart. And like all good Milas of the modern era, we have a Torx 20. Yep, it's the first time this one's been apart. One of my goals for the YouTube channel, as you guys will notice, is to have good documentation on high-end vacuums. And particularly because I work at a Mila dealer, I'm at a vantage point of making these videos to show you guys proper service on Mila's. So there's not a lot out there. It's kind of done, not in secrecy, but I think we'll call it exclusivity. Um, so. You definitely can't just go to any vacuum shop and get the parts for Mila, though most vacuum shops are Mila dealers now, because uh, the ones that weren't went out of business for the most part. Um, it's kind of hard to survive without one of the best selling vacuums, the most demanded. Um, so one thing that separates this from, say, the uh, UniQ or the brilliance are is the parking lights. And you can see that there's markings for the molding, but they're they're not there, so they've been removed. Um, kind of cool thing about a S8 C3 series canister is there is the relief valve. This also applies to an S6 that opens. And Panasonic and a few other vacuums have done this over the years, but what makes this relief valve kind of unique to these newer series of Mila's is on the 5000 series, like the Capricorn, uh, Pisces, those series of machines, uh, the US market just got a blank thing here. It didn't actually get the relief. They engineered it out of the unit on the US market because I guess we weren't worthy of it. Um, so 
kind of a interesting thing. All right. You know, I did that the other day. The um, this is something I I've, I've never done, but I did it the other day. I did it now. Is this cord reel guy just popped right off, and he's he's actually clipped on there. See, he's on there solid now. He's not going anywhere. I didn't break it. He just comes off apparently. Um, apparently, I'm uh, clumsy and knocked it off. So we're gonna open this up. So a lot of people, ooh, they think it's okay to just blow out the inside and what they can uh, to clean it out. They don't understand that you have to take this apart down to the motor to clean it. Um, sometimes I will take this. Uh, motor apart and clean it. Sometimes I will actually replace the motor when this happens, uh, depending on the situation. Um, so, first of all, you'll never blow clean. This is the muffling material. This will never blow clean. You'll never get that clean without taking it apart and washing it. The other thing, like this, is the motor the USA markings, is in the shroud. And the purpose of the shroud is sound dampening. Uh, that's, that's the sole purpose of the shroud. Um, and when you order a Milo motor, it actually comes in the shroud. Um, as of right now, that might change at any date, but as of right now. So the shroud has more dampening, and you can just see all the stuff in there. I've, that's now gotten airborne, yeah. So, and I will actually take these apart sometimes and clean these, and that's a subject for another time. Just going quickly, putting off this. I vacuum these off and then I rinse them out. Just because of how dirty they get. Again, dirt just hides everywhere in these. Once that happens, it's basically use the motor to blow it everywhere. Right. Cord reel just lifts out. At this point is when I usually check, make sure the cord reels are right. These are self-vacuuming cord reels still, but they're a hard plastic uh, self-vacuuming line instead of the rubber lines used before, which to me makes more sense. It's more cost effective and you don't have a separate piece that comes off and can get lost while you're servicing it. So I think that's an improvement actually. And these cord reels, I have to say this, these newer generation of cord reels we've had zero problems with. So that's a, that's a good thing too. So we're going to walk all this crap right here. All that is going to get washed. And then the motor, well, actually we'll discuss how to take the motor apart. So these are not designed to be serviced. These are change as a whole assembly. But, that being said, this one's filthy. In order to clean it, it is going to have to come apart. What I'm going to hit on is the lip around here, the metal lip. Do not hit any of this beige, um, it's a resin, the best way I can describe it as a material. Don't hit that with a mallet or you're going to be needing a new motor. Now this is one's under warranty still, so I could just replace the motor and build Mila, but this is the customer's boo-boo. The customer did pay us to do a service. So I'm going to just, you know, if it's a really busy season, I wouldn't do this, but I've got four vacuums to do today, and it's not even noon, so I'm going to pull this apart. So I'll wash this, and you can see stuff in here. 
Um, and this actually has a reverse thread and will come apart a little bit further if I find the right socket. Uh, it astounds me that the shop I work at, um, I ordered some of the tools. I didn't order a socket set because there was this half-ass little socket set here. But half of these sockets are not metric, which really confuses me because everything is metric. Even my parents' American cars were metric when I was a kid. I had an 85 Dodge truck that had most of the stuff on it that was metric. So that's just my little rant about things being metric. Um, I know we're in America, but still, most things are still metric. So um, those are the washers. Uh, and this is a diverter on the side here, so we're just going to actually put the washers on. This is a reverse thread, it's worth noting. <laughs> should have mentioned that's a reverse thread. So again, don't try this at home. So here's the fan. There's just one single fan that creates the suction in the shape of it. It's extremely efficient because uh, this creates 100 inches of water and suction just with this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and rinse this stuff off too. This is a uh, galvanized, so it's generally speaking, it doesn't rust unless you sit really like submerged in water for a very long time. Uh, so I'll I'll wash this and then I'll wipe this down and blow this out with compressed air afterwards, so the water doesn't sit on there too long. So uh, we're gonna go wash this off and then we will continue. Well, after the weekend, we've let these parts dry. We're gonna reassemble everything. Right here. First thing we're gonna do is reassemble the motor. Again, this is the part where I'm gonna recommend you don't try this at home. And I'm definitely not liable if you do do this and mess up your Mila. Again, this is reverse threading on here. Alright. Alright, we're back after a brief SIBO interruption. Now putting these motors back together is really delicate. Just make sure you're doing it evenly. So what I'm doing is I'm doing that with both sides. Now the motor looks about back together. I'm just going to give it some gentle taps. And you can see that the motor is seated evenly all the way around the lip. Just rotate it by hand, looks good. And I also blew this motor out with compressed air. So this motor is good to go back to its prospective home. Um, putting this thing together is a little bit awkward. Yep. Alright, so line that up. Um, there is some foam lining inside this motor housing. It's very, very fragile. And two things can happen. One, if you try to vacuum it out, it can destroy it. Um, the other thing can happen is simply just by washing it, it destroys itself, so a lot of times I end up just not putting that back in. I'm not talking about this stuff, I'm talking about there's some really delicate foam. And it gets really, really nasty, so it's it's gone and it's not a part you can order, so it's just kind of part of this procedure here. Um, and all it does is make the vacuum a few decibels quieter. Um, again, not something customers going to notice or really anybody is going to really care too much about. All right. All right, we got 
with that. I yes, said you will notice if this is not in there. So the green stuff is rather important. We got that. And you can see the the big mega sticker on there. Next is going to be the cord rail, which I also blew out with compressed air. Um, but I'm going to wipe down just to be on the safe side. So this is going to go on here. Until it clicks on. And this plug just kind of goes in here. And that's one thing we don't wash, so just wipe it off my hand. That all gets tucked in to the motor piece. The cord reel is all snapped and working. The other thing that can fall out during washing it, as I've checked, talked about before, is the check valve. Check valves. Put it in there, you want to seat it in there properly. Which of course I took out. Just pop right back in. Actually, it's in there crooked. There we go. All right, we got that. And then with the top housing, this again, this stuff is very important in terms of reducing sound and vibration. you can really see that the motor is in its own compartment when we're doing this and you can see why they call it a sealed helper unit. Alright, got all that in. This is not like a unique that has, or a brilliance that has the extra wiring here. I suppose you could add it if you ordered the parts, but just a little side note on that. So that one needs to go in. That needs to go in. use a shallower bit, um, there's less wobble and these are easier to find more precise. It is extremely hard to find these long that are not uh, out of true. I don't know if you guys can see but it is a little out of true and it drives me nuts and it can cause the screw to jump so I only use this really unless I absolutely have to. Like when we're putting this piece on. Alright, so we got all that on. Now you put this on. So this part is a little different than when we do it on some of the other Milos. Um, I'm also going to put this guy. So let's put this on. These guys are really. Uh, when Milo made the, the, when they did the train, they addressed that these guys have to be clipped in just right. And the reason the bumper goes all the way up here is because people had a tendency to fishtail their vacuums and hit furniture here, not here. So the bumper goes up here to help protect furniture. Really a cool design. On another note, the S8, I know this is a C3 now, but the S8... When they announced them, the had the engineer from Germany who was quite quite the person. She was extremely I mean she was an engineer, of course she's gonna be extremely but she was just really cool to talk to somebody about vacuums from a different country, not from the repair industry or the sales side. Uh, she was just really smart, pleasurable to talk to, and I cannot remember her name. Um, 
I remember, ex and it was uh, the second time I had met her. The first time I met her was uh, service training for the Mila S7. Um, and the guys were standing around there and said, oh, this girl doesn't know what she's doing. And of course she, with a single uh, a screwdriver and some bits, took apart, completely took apart an S7, way past anything that I would ever normally do. Um, and just wowed all these guys uh, at the BDTA. Um, I really wish I could remember her name, but uh, uh, what, what brings that up is talking about this bumper, talking about how this has a larger cutout, and some of these changes that were made from the S5, which is a very similar vacuum uh, in a lot of ways. Take same bag, filter, um, different motor, uh, same power but different motor. So that was really just kind of something. Um, somebody I'd like to run into again, just talk back. I really wish I could have gotten like a cup of coffee with her and like just talked about vacuums um, and vacuum design. Um, all right, so we got that all snapped together. Uh, so now I'm just going to quickly make sure everything works. Everything works. So that's a good sign. Now, I was going to replace this dock. I think it's probably all right. Let's put a bag in here and double check it. Okay. I'm out of bags. One would think as a dealer that we'd have some big bulk pack that we buy. Um, and they do make a big bulk pack, but we don't buy it from service. We actually just buy the bags like this. Straight out of our inventory. Love how Mila packs their the vacuum bags. So, something that is probably really confusing for customers now is if we look on here, we see all those. And uh, those are all the old model numbers. None of the new model numbers actually have this. So you have to know that you're cutting on the 8000 series line, uh, even though there's nothing that says 8000 series on their vacuums anymore. Kind of a little quirk. About the bags. All right. Now somebody had commented that on uh, on YouTube that I threw one of these away the other day because it was really bad. It was really nasty, and I did. Um, they are washable sometimes, so I do. I did. This is when I washed. It has a bit of an odor to it still. Um, yeah, it smells like wet dog, so I'm not going to put it back in. Uh, so that, that's why I don't wash those ever. Um, I, it's been years since I tried to wash one, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, and again, I'm right about just replacing it or just getting rid of it. Alright. Again, you have to be careful when you put these buttons in. Easy to misalign those and break those. So we just test a couple more things before we clean it up. First thing I'm going to test is pull back checking cable. That's working. I'm also testing the bag lockup. Ooh. So I let this dry over the weekend, but some uh, some rust just blew out somewhere in the back. So it tells me the lid did not dry like they usually do. It's interesting when you do something so many times. Make sure everything's all right in the lid. Really any metal. It's cool as if you take this lid apart. You guys are all gonna hate me for doing this. <laughs> That's how the lid comes apart. 
Um, all right. What I'm doing right now is just seeing, making sure this is dry and there's no water stuck in here. Uh, and that that water actually could have been there was this is on a metal rack where I set stuff to dry and it could have been not even from this machine. But I just want to double check because there is wiring through here and this does need to be dry. And it it all feels dry and. Yeah, so I think something just dripped down on the inside of the lid from when I had it sitting on the metal rack. So I'm really not concerned too much about that. Alright, well that was an interesting adventure. Um, I think I had a vacuum uh, short out on me once on camera too. That was kind of a fun thing. I wish I could remember which video that was. See, so when you do this long enough, these all just tend to blur together. You, you don't tend to really remember customers too often. It, something really has to stand out if I remember who a customer is. I mean, it has to take me a while. Or I have to see them a lot. Um, the vacuums, I see these so many of these uh, not so many, so many, but I do see eno enough vacuums that I can't remember one Milo customer from another most of the time, or especially when people are bringing their Dyson, I, I could not recall if somebody brought in their Dyson or not, I see so many of them. Um, all the tools, and I wash the tools as well, it's something I do. That's really interesting that that happened. Yeah, so that's what that was. That was really interesting. That just wherever that water came from, this was on the bottom. Walk over and show you guys the shelf and why that happened. So this is where I dry parts, and up here is where I walk. Uh, washed my panini press which dripped down onto that um, and there's a filter queen and some pieces so just a explanation of what happened there uh, I feel bad that I got juice from my panini press that I washed uh, in a customer's vacuum that's not very professional I suppose um, all right Well, we're going to uh, give them a new pre-motor filter uh, so that theirs does not smell like uh, whatever my panini press probably smells like that I washed out. Alright, that is all dry and good. The last thing that we do, again, I'm not a huge fan of this, our scent tabs. And there is a little place right there I'll wedge a scent tab in. Again, not a huge fan of them because they always end up smelling like dust the next day, but that is how uh, let's, we'll clean the paint marks off while we're at this. You guys, something more to watch. on this one.
bumper always gets it the worst, as it's intended to. right there. Oh, that's something. It's just something. Alright. Yeah. Get a healthy dose of vac polish. Microfiber. Finish it all off with. This customer just bought this HEPA filter from us when this happened. That looks better. Alright, well please like, subscribe, Comment below, um, and do, do tell me about your meal experience below.